Drums can be a tricky thing, uh, especially when most people are used to just using like a, a Kong drum kit or an MPC or something like that. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but in the case of having a full kit, having it mic'd, um, you're going to run into a lot of problems, but you're also going to run into a lot of things that allow you to be more flexible with it. So in this case, I'm going to be illustrating the New York drums technique, which is uh, basically a nickname given to a form of parallel compression that's done with drum kits. So here I have a five-piece drum kit. Uh, we have two mics on the kick. One of them's a Yamaha subkick to capture the low end. The other, I believe it was an MD421, either that or an RE20. Uh, one of the dynamics that's good for that. Uh, D112 is also good. Uh, we also have mics on the snare top, on the bottom to capture the sound of the snares themselves. Uh, we have a mic on the hats, a mic each for the three toms, and then we have two overheads and one room mic. So basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven tracks for one drum kit. So basically, the idea behind the New York drums technique is to subgroup all of these, which is to uh, route all of these mono tracks into a single stereo channel. Um, and then from there, you'll be able to process it. In the case of the New York drums, you have two subgroups. So basically, all the drums are routed to one subgroup. That subgroup is duplicated. So the same signal, the entire drum set, appears on two separate tracks. And you do compression on the second track and then blend levels to get a mix of compressed and uncompressed drums. This allows you to really compensate for a lot of things uh, that may not have been captured in the drum miking itself um, and also just enhance your sound overall. So we're going to start off in Reason, and it's a bit tricky. Uh, since there is no routing matrix to speak of, we're going to have to kind of create one ourselves. So the first thing we want to do is, where is that? There it is. Let's audition the drums and see how they sound. So here we go. That's nice, uh, capturing the nuances of the snare drum, uh, and, you know, we got a lot of room mic in there. I haven't uh, done anything beyond a little bit of preliminary mixing, basically just levels and pan here. Um, ordinarily, you would gate the crap out of a lot of this stuff, uh, the toms especially, and um, usually do a, a high-pass filter on most of the items to get rid of all that mud below about uh, 60, 70, 76 hertz, I, I think is a, is a common uh, value. <clears throat> At any rate, why don't we go over here to our rack. So we have all of these. These are all the drum tracks. Now, in Reason, there are channel strips or audio tracks. And then there are also these things called mix channels, which are basically, uh, they're a channel in the mixer. We can see it showed up here. Uh, let's move that over. We're going to call this drums. Oop, let's capitalize that. Drums. So the mix channel doesn't actually have a lane. You can create a lane for automation, but it doesn't have an audio lane. So uh, for those of you with Pro Tools, think of it as an aux track. Basically, we're in stereo, we're as wide as we can get, centered, and from there, our goal is, there we go, our goal is to take the outputs of all of these and run them into the drum subgroup. So we're going to show insert effects. Since we have one, two, three, oh yeah, it was like 11, uh, we're going to need to merge these. In the end, we want a single stereo track. So in this case, I'm going to create spot, uh, Spider Audio Merger and Splitter. So we're going to duplicate that. So we have four in total. It may seem like a lot, and this next part may seem complicated, but remember, it's the same thing 11 times over. We're going to go ahead and flip the rack. We're going to take the direct out from all of these tracks and merge them. So by the end of it, we have not 11 tracks, but 
two mono tracks or one stereo. The direct out here, it says it breaks internal mixer routing. Basically, once you drag the direct out somewhere, it ceases to go to the mixer and instead goes to the drums group. So uh, why don't we play back and I'll show you. Seems like I made a little mistake there. Let's go back here and, uh, ah, that's the main thing. So basically, in the back here, the mix channel has an input and a direct out just like the others. Also has inserts. So what we're gonna do is route the output of the spider to the input of the drums. So now we have the hats going. We're also gonna drag down the hat, uh, overhead left overhead right and uh, the panning information is retained and snare so we haven't gotten all of them yet since these are merged we're gonna go ahead and drag the merged output to the first channel of the second merger and then proceed to Drag the rest of these out there. Get that sub kick in there. Get the room mic. And now we're out of them, so we just drag the merged output to the third merger. And then proceed with the toms. Now this can be a little tedious at first, but once you get it set up, you're pretty much good to go. So we've run out of room on the third. Drag it down to the fourth. And merge that with the kick. And then this output here, we have at the end of this cable our entire drum set. So we're going to drag it up to the input of our drums channel. So now let's flip it back around. Go to the main view. And we'll play back. As you can see, all these, it shows the levels because the levels are metered pre-output, but all the outputs are going straight to this channel. I unmute it and we can hear them all again. Okay, so why don't we go back to the rack? That takes care of the first half. Flip it around. We're going to create another mix channel and we're going to call this comp drums. This one will get a copy of the stereo subgroup as well. So down here we have the output going to the input of that mix channel. Why don't we disconnect that? We're going to take the output of the merged audio. So at the end of this cable, again, we have the entire drum kit. We're going to drag it over to the splitter. Drag one copy of that to the drums, the other copy to the subgroup drums. So now we have our entire drum set merged and then that merged stereo pair is copied, one of them going to each of these channels. So let's take a look at the mixer again. So we should be able to hear identical signals on here. We do. We've done everything correctly. So the next thing to do is show insert effects on the comp drums. And we are going to insert a M-class compressor or, you know, any other device you want. And let's just turn down the threshold to 23, soft knee. We're going to turn it up to about 5 to 1. Uh, 5.74 is fine. And we're going to turn the attack down a little bit so we get our compression for the initial stick of the snare and the kick. Now the kick has a little bit slower attack um, since, you know, the waveforms are longer and they move slower, etc. 
and then we're going to turn the release up a little bit. I haven't played with the adapt release, so I'm not going to check that. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the gain reduction meter here and try and match that with the output gain, uh, which is also called makeup gain. So our end signal has a smaller dynamic range, but also the same overall level. So we're peeking around uh, 12 decibels of gain reduction. So I'm going to turn it to about 10.7. This maxes out at 11.8, so basically this is squashing. Um, but we're going to turn it down a little bit. Uh, 9.6 is pretty close to 10. And go back to the mixer. So now we have our drum kit here, our compressed drum kit there. Let's drag that all the way down. And uh, we're playing just the drum kit now. We're going to move in with the comp drums and slowly adjust it so we get the right amount of feel. You can hear that compression. I like that. The release time is just enough to give a little bit of decay on the kick, but then kind of slope it off with that soft knee. So you get a tiny bit of pumping effect, but it also seems to increase the feel of the room a little bit. So there's just the compressed, and then we'll move on to just the regular. Sounds good, but let's unmute this and we'll see how it enhances it. Keep your eye on your meter. And that's how you do parallel compression in Reason, also known as the New York Drums Technique. Now, ever since the advent of the pulverizer, this has gotten a lot easier. It won't be exactly the same, but I will demonstrate it for you. So we're going to delete this comp drums. Uh, delete selected only. And so now we have this, of course, going as usual, just our regular drums. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an insert effect. And that insert will be, uh, where is it, effects. And we're going to go down to the pulverizer. And now that's going to route it to the insert send and insert return. So basically, our drums are routed to the processor, then routed back. Now the reason this is usable is because there is a wet dry knob which basically, the more dry it is, if it's all the way dry, it's all the original signal. It's all the way wet, that means it's all the way compressed. And uh, just so you know, the squash knob acts like a compressor. Now, instead of adjusting the faders of the drums and the compressed drums to get a blend, we're going to use the blend knob to do the same thing. Now, you know, usually with a drum kit, you'll have a Kong or something, and this is a great insert effect to use for the Kong. Or you know, for any instrument, for that matter. So when you have multiple tracks, though, it gets a little bit more complicated, as you've seen, but this cuts down the complication by a great deal. So why don't we listen to it dry? Now, we do have the gain increasing here, but why don't we just turn up the squash, maybe almost halfway, and then I will sweep this to wet until we get a nice sound. we go it has kind of a reverse delay sound to it but effectively it's compressing and so that would be the easy way you also have the option of adding dirt which uh, can sound quite musical on certain things but remember garbage in garbage out so let's turn that dirt up and see how it sounds definitely a reverse gate effect or a reverse delay effect bypass it that's regular there we go now one thing I forgot to do, which should definitely be done in this case, is bypass the filter. 
You do not want a low pass filter or a high pass or a band pass or anything on these drums. That can be taken care of individually on each of the drum channels. So let's try that with the filter off. Let's turn down the dirt a little bit, you know, just clean up the path and uh, see what we got. A similar effect, but to my ear, at least in these headphones, not as nice as the M-Class Maximizer, or uh, excuse me, the M-Class Compressor that we used in the previous version. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you can make use of Parallel Compression in Reason 6.